All right, let's let's do this because I want to get back to watching Sailor Moon. Yeah, I want to continue my puzzle. I'm kind of addicted. Nice. You just said you're a dick. Starting oh, that's in three. Also true. No. <laughs> Boys aren't done. Starting in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Char Shots Gamecast. Each week, we talk about the games we've been playing and news we've been reading. I'm your host, Ben, a.k.a. The Marvelous Siggy, and joining me is first captain, Justin. Justin, welcome back. Wait, first captain? Do you mean first mate? I'm making up terminology. Go with it. First captain, Justin, because I'm admiral. You're first captain. There you go. You could. You only. You only have one captain, though. N- not. A, not if it's a fleet of ships, amigo. But it's just. It's you're the captain of that ship, and then the other person's the captain of I'm a different. I'm the admiral ship. of the whole ships. The admiral. I'm Admiral Iggy. You are first captain. All right. Move on. Make, I made it made sense. And joining us also is uh, Captain of the Zenai Zaibatsu, Tyler. Tyler, welcome back. Thanks for having me. I uh, just had some Wendy's, and uh, I haven't had that in a long time. Wendy's nuts. <laughs> Anyways. God damn it, uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> not even, it's not even a good one. I don't know why, but I've been on these nuts, like, per, like, tirade all week. I mean, that's better than most of yours, because at least, like, Wendy's, like, it, it fits. Well, I, I, yeah, I guess. Y'all don't fall for it, that's the problem. Anyways, thank you everybody for listening and, or watching us. Uh, we have the Char Games Gamescast, a group of friends who decided that we're going to talk about the games we've been playing, news we've been reading. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it to Justin, as we normally do, as I will usually put... You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Tyler to make like a graph, like a, t- a Justin timer graph, and to put it in the stream. Like, what is Justin's time? Um, and let's see if he hits the mark every week. You know, I, I can do that. Challenge. Right? You can, yeah, but I think it'd be funnier if Tyler made it. Um, Why? Yeah, all right, it's it's my stream. <laughs> Why would? Yeah, it would make more sense if he did it. Right. Since you, since it is your stream, what have you been playing besides Ratchet and Clank? Because I know you've been playing that like crazy. Yeah, boy. Um, yeah, I, sorry, I was trying to see if there is just a timer thing on the widgets for Streamlabs, and there's not, so I'd have to, uh, find one online. But anyway, um, I have been playing a lot of Ratchet and Clank. I beat it again, uh, on my challenge run. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but I got the platinum, which was exciting. Um, and actually it wasn't terribly hard. Like, the the hardest one was finding all the Krager Bears, and so I just used a guide for that. And then um, my last trophy was just playing music on the jukebox at uh, at Zerky's Bar. So I was kind of satisfied with that being, like, you know, the video of my, uh, my final trophy. Because, like, when the Platinum popped, I was playing um, uh, Join Me at the Top or something like that on the jukebox. And so I thought that was kind of funny, like... But anyway, um, yeah, I beat the game with, like, I hadn't gotten all of the weapons up to level 10, uh, like all the Omega versions of the weapons, um, and I didn't upgrade every weapon all the way, because I just didn't feel like grinding out for all the uh, Raritanium and stuff, but I basically got everything else. Like, I mean, I got the Platinum, so clearly I did all of the things, um, but it's also a pretty easy Platinum. You don't have to 100% the game for it. Um, but yeah, still a very good game and I recorded my review of it today. So hopefully I'll be able to edit that and get it out like next weekend. Probably. Um, it, it is, it's, it's going to be about an hour long. I can already tell. And aside from that, um, I got a, uh, a few emulators on my phone, um, to play games on the run because I'm never home to play things anymore. So I started up my uh, my replay of the Metroid series with Metroid Zero Mission, and I found out my phone can actually like natively screen record at pretty good quality. I guess just like the Samsung screen recorder, like if you go into the the game mode or whatever, um, it like basically you know minimizes all other things so that the game is the only thing taking up your phone's power. And then the screen recording is like full screen quality. It's insane. Um, so I think I'm going to start using my phone for a lot of stuff I need to record because it's just the easiest way to do it. 
at least for old things. Um, so yeah, I'm a good portion of the way through Zero Mission now. Um, I don't remember exactly where I left off because it was a three-day weekend. But And then I started up uh, the Final Fantasy IV Complete Edition, like the PSP version. Um, yes. Because I thought that the uh, the Pixel remasters or whatever of all the games were coming out like at the beginning of Ju- July. And it turns out one through three are coming out like the end of July. Not sure when four through six are coming. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just play it for free on PSP. Uh, it's still a really solid version. Um, the art style is kind of ugly, but like it works. It's not like six where it just like the sprites feel at odds with everything else. It's kind of like a... It's, a, it's an overly bright, like kind of stylized art. For the whole game. So it still kind of has that like mobile sheen to it. But I don't mind it. Uh, and it's nicely animated and stuff. Like there's still some good moments in there. I think the DS version is the best one. But emulating DS games sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll play through this. Uh, I haven't made it very far. Hold I on. Just... Hold on. Hold on. What? Justin. Emulate these nuts. Uh that works. That works. Give it to me. Give me my point. I'm not give giving you these nuts. these nuts. You, Tyler, give me my point, please. Ding. There you go. Thank you. You Moving can on. point at these nuts. Um, there you go. <laughs> give, give Justin a point. <laughs> Justin gets a point. Ding. So, uh, yeah, I just got, um, I was going to say Strago. What's his name? Tella? Oh, yeah, the uh, old the man. The yeah. bar guy. Yeah. I'm pro- I probably said a racist thing because that's what he looks like. Right? Um, I just got him and fought like the... Uh, the sand monster? Yes. Ant- Antlion. Antlion. Yeah, that's Antlion. it. Um, and then pretty much left it off there. It was like end of day Friday and I kept getting distracted. So I don't remember exactly where I ended because I was like, I would walk two feet and then have to like turn my Fight phone off. And yeah. Oh. Um. But anyway, and then the probably the surprise one is that I started up um, Persona 3 Portable, uh, which I did not realize was so different from the regular Persona 3, like on, what was that, PS2? Yeah, it's on PS2. Yeah. There's also the F- FS version that I currently have. I'm not sure how different that is. I thought that was the only one. I thought that was like the PS2 version, and then there's Portable on the PSP. Uh, there's also like a, uh, apparently there's like a F, a special edition on PS2 as well. But again, I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. Oh, haven't really touched it yet. Okay. But yeah. So it's I mean it's obviously a, a major downgrade from like Persona Five, for example, and it's even a downgrade from the you know console version of Persona Three, like weirdly so, because I mean there's things like you know Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. That's a fairly complete handheld package of like a, you know, PS2 game um, or PS2 style game, I should say. Like the areas are kind of empty and stuff like that, but it's still, I mean, it's fully 3D rendered areas that you explore and like, you know, some nice FMV cutscenes and stuff. But like this one, it's, it cuts out pretty much all of the uh, anime cutscenes. I think there's like there's an intro video when you start the game up and that's it so far. Um, and all of like the social links and like uh, character interactions and stuff are just uh, portrait dialogue on screen with voice acting, which is still great. Like, it, you know, there's there's well animated um, portrait frames that come up and stuff. But you never actually directly control your character like around the world map and stuff um you have like a pointer thing that you just kind of move around and like put over a person to talk to them you put over like key interests or key points of interest to like see what they say or whatever you move it over the the s spot to save that kind of thing um and it's it's basically the map from uh the wii version of sonic unleashed sure um (laughs) And it's only, I, th- I think I do know what you're talking about, actually. Um, it's only when you're in uh, Tartarus, uh, which still sounds like a like a dental disease, um, that you gain control of your character. 
So, like, there's still, you know, fully 3D, like, top-down uh, randomized dungeon floors, similar to, like, Mementos and Persona 5, but that's the only time you actually, like, directly control your character. And so you have, you know, the randomized combat and stuff in there, which the battle system still feels great. Like, I, I really like that the characters, like, shoot themselves in the head to do attacks or to summon their personas for attacks. I'm not committing suicide. I'm summoning my persona. Yeah. Like, in the opening cutscene, it's, like, one of the uh, one of the party members is just, like, in front of a mirror, like, you can do it. You can do it. And, like, just holds a gun to her head. And then it cuts away. And there's, like, no context for it. It's a really strong scene. And then you find out later that that's, like, you know, persona related and all that. Um, and I like the overall, like, story arc and everything of, like, the apathy disease or whatever that everyone's afflicted with. And you have to, like, go into Tartarus and, like, uh, kill all the shadows that's affecting people's apathy. Um, but honestly, I don't mind, like, you know, the quote-unquote downgrades. Because I am playing on a PSP and I don't necessarily need a, you know, like, droning on 70-hour RPG. It's kind of neat that it's a little streamlined. But having seen, like... Uh, some video and stuff from the PS2 version. I just don't understand why they couldn't just port it directly. Like, it feels weird that they couldn't fit all of that on a uh, PSP disc. UM was that uh, UMDs? Uh, yeah, they're UMDs. Yeah, I couldn't remember if those PSP or Vita. Um. So yeah, it's it's more the principle of the matter. Like, it feels like it should be able to work, but I'm okay with the fact that uh, I'm okay with what we get on portable. Um, and I'm, I'm still, I'm still pretty invested. Uh, so because of that, I also picked up um, Persona 4 Golden and the Steam sale. Um, nice. Because I figure if I like, you know, this watered down version of Persona 3, then I'll probably like Persona 4. Like after five, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go backwards because I read about how like the dungeons aren't, you know, custom made and all this, like all this stuff that they hadn't done yet. Until five. Um, but I mean, clearly four is a step up from three. So I'll probably like it still. I mostly just don't like the like the Humpty Dumpty looking mascot guy that you have Teddy. in four. Yeah, Teddy. He's basically us. He just spouts puns. Yeah, he's just dumb looking. Like he's no Morgana. Not at all. Um... Let's see. I think that's about it. I dabbled in a few other games uh, that's not really worth talking about. Um, just because, like, you know, I was I was testing out the emulator and stuff. Uh, I was a little disappointed. I couldn't get Metroid Prime to run stable. Like, even just, you know, the GameCube version. Like, obviously, the Wii version it's is tougher with, like, the motion controls and all that, trying to map that to a controller. Um, but even the GameCube version, like, it ran and it was decent. But it was, like, inconsistent frame-wise. Um, and I wasn't even, like, jumping up the resolution or anything. I think I had it, like, 720p. And it was still kind of choppy. So that's a bit of a bummer considering, like, 3DS games worked fine. I don't I don't know what the difference is. But, yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying mobile emulation. I picked up a, um, a controller. The uh, Kishi. Razer. Yeah. And it's like I got this one because it's a little more compact, like to take around with me. Um, but it's a little <laughs> awkward the way it, like uh, that sounds painful. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little awkward the way you have to like kind of release and like open it up. Like it, it feels like it needs more than two hands to do. Um, but <laughs> I tend to just kind of keep my phone <laughs> in it, and until I'm you know, until <laughs> I need to put my phone in my pocket or something. Uh, so it's it's a little long. But it works well. Like it's a very, uh, it's a very solid and like tactile controller that's made mobile gaming so much more satisfying. I don't actually like play like controller based mobile games on it. I just use it for emulation. But that's the best option, honestly, because you can do all the button mapping yourself. Um. Yeah, I think that's about it. A lot of mobile gaming. <laughs> wow, under time this time. Holy shit. I think that might be a first. Uh, ring the bells, everybody. 
I mean, I've Yay. also been doing a puzzle. I can talk about a puzzle, but no, we'll just move on. No, you can. You, when you and Thomas can get together, do a podcast for your old man things, and that's perfectly <laughs> fine. No, um, in my defense, like I was, I was cleaning up my office and everything because of the you know the water damage and all that. Um, and we found the box of my Majora's Mask uh, like map puzzle in it, and that I never put together because we have cats, and it's hard to do a puzzle when you have cats. Oh, um, I imagine. Yeah. So I just I'd kept it in the box as like a keepsake, but the box was destroyed, even though it was oh, like no. in wrapped in plastic. So we opened it up and was like, this puzzle is probably ruined. That sucks. Opened it up. All the pieces were in another bag inside the box. So they were oh. actually dry. So I was like, all right, well, now I've just got this bag of puzzle pieces. Like I might as well put it together and then, you know, like seal it and hang it or something. Um, so I'm finally doing this puzzle I've had for like five or six years. Nice. I don't have the attention span to do puzzles. Just, I didn't think I did, but I'm, I'm hooked. Like, I don't want, I, I had to like pull myself away from it through this podcast. I hate puzzles. <laughs> um, all right, Tyler, what have you been up to my dude? So if you remember last week, um, I got midway through Jack two and I was able to beat it this week. Um, uh, when we last left off, Jack steadily builds up allies in Haven City to overthrow Baron Praxis. These include Aslan, Ashlyn, a badass warrior lady of the Crimson Guard, who also happens to be Praxis' daughter. Tess, a resistant member who acts as a spy in crew suspicious activity, and for some reason has a thing for Daxter. Ew. <laughs> a lurker refugee who, I honestly forget his name. A blind oracle and her translator, who also happens to be a parrot cross of a monkey, who may or may not be racist. He has a thick Spanish accent. I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. Um, there's the enigmatic leader of the resistance as well. Samos. Wait, what? So, this is the stage that trained Jack and Daxter in the first game, but he looks way younger here than he did before. And it's the future, so it's even more confusing. They also stumble onto the Samos, Samos that they're familiar with, and the two constantly butt heads of each other. They also reunite with Kira, who isn't exactly thrilled that Jack changed so much since the first game. She does a she does lead a hover bike racing team though, and the winner of the circuit gets a tour of the Baron's Palace, so it works in his interest even if their interactions are uncomfortable now. But the champion racer, Errol, stands in his way, of being, and being Praxis' right-hand man has a huge grudge against Jack for some reason. The good guys eventually discover the Tomb of Mar, the architect of Haven City. After some tight platforming challenges and a giant spider chase reminiscent of Crash Bandicoot, Jack comes face-to-face -face with a Precursor statue in possession of the ancient MacGuffin known as the Precursor Stone. Mar had hidden it deep within this chamber long ago to hide it from the Metalheads, who are revealed to be galaxy-conquering aliens that wiped out the Precursors long ago. Before they can retrieve the stone, however, Praxis swoops in and steals it, and bombards you with a lame boss fight. They eventually learn that Praxis plans to crack the stone open to attack the Metalhead Nest, but doing so will destroy literally everything. Jack gathers a bunch of hidden Precursor artifacts to help Kira rebuild the sled thingy so they can head back to their own time. So all that's left to do is to take care of Praxis one-on-one -on -one and retrieve the stone so the Resistance can destroy the Metalheads. So you gotta win the Grand Racing Grand Prix to do it. There's three races that you have to compete in. One where you control Daxter after Jack throws a hissy fit beforehand. You race against seven randos in a condensed track within five laps. If you don't make first place or you crash your bike too many times in walls or in a pit, fish and mail, try again, asshole. There are several instances where I jumped a little too high and the ceiling instantly killed me. The third and final race pits you against Errol himself, and my palms immediately got sweaty because when I played this game for the first time in 2012... Needs to Yeah, so the first time I played this, I remember the race being super difficult because his AI is incredibly aggressive towards you, which is in line of continuity. So this is it. The final race to decide Jack's fate. The race that will decide which of these rivals is the best racer in the city. He crashed into a wall in the third lap and died. What a dork. So Jack the pulls the... Is that the final battle of the game? It's not the final battle. You're okay. thinking of something else. No, I was so, like, yeah. how is the final battle a race? But never mind. I misunderstood. 
yeah, so Jack wins the race. Uh, Baron Praxis comes in to uh, congratulate the racer who has no idea who he is. Jack pulls the, it's me, Austin. But, but Praxis uh, orders the winner be executed. And Arrow shows his good sportsmanship by trying to run Jack over, but runs into a vat of eco and dies. Oh. Afterwards, all hell breaks loose as Jack learns that crew had not only been building a super weapon to crack open the Precursor Stone, but he also secretly broke down the security wall keeping the metalheads out of the city. Jack and Daxter beat him in a dumb boss fight and blow him up along with the weapon. Afterwards, the old man from the beginning of the game, Kor, reveals himself as the metalhead leader as he rips his giant monster body out of the tiny old person skin. Think of it like a human version of a clown car. He mortally wounds Praxis and leaves, but in his dying breath gives Jack the stone. The duo bursts into the metalhead nest to face off against Kor, who not only has the mute kid from before in his grasp, but also drops a bunch of plot twist bombs on them. This child in question is Jack. He was originally from the future, but sent back in time to hide him from the metalheads and train him to gain the power of light to destroy them later. He also mentions that the stone is a precursor egg, hidden by Mars so it'll grant the Chosen One the power of light. He says Jack is too tainted by Dark Eco to beat him, but Jack responds with fuck that and fuck you. The boss fight is extremely easy by the way, just shoot Kor in his big dumb head enough and it's game over. So Kor dies, the little Jack activates the stone, reviving the precursor who goes through the time rift. Young Jack and young Samos use the time rift to go back to the past and let the original game unfold from there. And everyone in the future basks in their victory. Ashland becomes the Haven City's new ambassador, Torn's the leader of the Crimson Guards, Daxter rebrands Cruz Bar into his own, Jack and Kira get cock blocked for the second time, and everyone lives happily ever after and end by musing how cool it would be to see Mar and that he may be closer than we think. Maybe a bit of illusion there. So yeah, that's the end of Jack 2. Like I said last week, it's a fun sequel that isn't without its problems. The trial and error nature of the missions wouldn't be as painful if they had checkpoints or if all the enemies they throw at you did less damage. Driving around is a real pain in the butt, and you do this most of the way through. Problems aside though, I still thought it was a fun playthrough. The story is interesting and told well, the characters are a ton of fun, platforming is as tight as ever, and the gunplay feels pretty good, all things considered. I haven't touched Act 3 yet, since I want to save my full thoughts for next week, so look forward to that soon. I uh, also gave the new character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate a shot, Kazuya Mishima, arguably the longest-running antagonist in Tekken. To the average Joe Schmo picking him up without any knowledge of the game he hails from, he seems incredibly complicated due to the rest of the roster. Granted, he is, but he's super fun once you figure out which of his dozens of moves works best for specific situations. When I tried him out for the first time, my muscle memory kind of kicked in, and I tried doing Electric Wind Godfist like he would in Tekken. But most of his moves are performed with the regular attack button, which takes time to get used to since every direction with the control stick is a different attack. His B button moves include his devil form, shooting lasers and doing a command throw like Bowser or Ganondorf side Bs. They put in the misstep since it's a huge part of his moveset in the series, but it's much easier to do here. In Tekken, you do the misstep by pressing forward, pause for a split second, then hit down forward. But here, you just do the short you can input with no need for the pause. You can get specific moves out of misstep like the hell sweep of the left hook, a command grab called Hell's Gate, the rising uppercut which is great for KOs, and the wind god fist as well as the electric variant. For those of you that don't know, Wind God Fist is a unique move where depending on how accurate your button press is in conjunction with your misstep input, you'll get the regular move that acts as a reliable launcher or combo extender. The electric variant is stronger, comes out faster, and is super safe on block. Electrics are frame perfect though, so getting them out consistently takes a lot of practice, but it's super satisfying to get that extra damage and hearing Kazuya yell, Dopia! Here, doing electrics is a bit more satisfying is a bit less forgiving, you now have two frames to do it instead of just one. <laughs> so, that was generous of Sakurai. Uh, it doesn't KO at all, which is kind of disappointing, 
but it still does good damage and has sun properties, giving you another move to work with to keep the combo going. During my first few matches with against the AI, I got my ass handed to me since my muscle memory kept clashing with what I learned from last week's presentation. But I eventually got a handle on dealing big damage and racking up KOs against the strongest computer opponents. Kazuya hits like a truck, and his super armor on his forward smash really helps in the pinch. I've also gotten used to the project projectile deflecting left splits kick, a move I never would have guessed could do that. As for Kazuya's classic mode, it pits him against uh, fighters that primarily use their fists. These include one-on-ones against Ryu, Little Mac, and Lucario, and a 1v2 match against Donkey Kong and King K. Rule to represent how you fight animals in Tekken, specifically the Barracuma and the Raptor of Boxing Gloves named Alex. Yes, those are things that happen in Tekken. My favorite fight is against the knee fighters wearing the soldier garbs, which is pretty much a reference to the Tekken 4 intro where Kazuya returns after being presumed dead 20 years prior and beats the shit out of Tekken 4 soldiers. So I thought that was a cool throwback. His uh, new stage, the Mishima Dojo, is also really cool. It's a Hachi stage from Tekken 2 and is the backdrop for a specific moment in Tekken 7 that really makes me sad. If you knock dudes into the walls or ceiling, it bursts apart kind of like the King of Fighters stadium. Heihachi is also in the background and he reacts to KOs. It is a bit disappointing that we don't see other characters as well, but it makes sense in continuity because he's literally the only dude that hangs out in this dojo at all. Unless he's attacked by killer robots a la Tekken 5's opening, but that's neither here nor there. Music choices are great too. There's at least two from every game in the series. Some of my favorite includes Kazuya's theme uh, from the arcade and PS1 versions of Tekken 2, as well as a godlike remix. I love that. The opening theme for Tekken Tag Tournament, Moonlit Wilderness, Snow Castle, Heat Haze Shadow, and a remix of Aloneness, the ending theme of Tekken 7 that I already really liked when it had vocals. Playing as Kazuya is really fun, though I feel like I could use a bit more practice. Can't wait to fight you guys with this character, especially Ben's Ryu. That would be pretty sick to reenact Street Fighter Cross Tekken. So yeah. Like uh, my Ryu is something to be feared, and it's not. <laughs> I fear no man, not even your Ryu. So yeah, uh, since this new DLC got me on a bit of a Tekken high, I started replaying some older games for a bit. The first is Tekken Tag Tournament, aka the best PS2 launch game ever. I decided to make this the next video subject for Tiger Shoes Reviews, and I have everything else follow suit. I also figured to record high definition em emulation on my PC, so no longer will you see the choppy 780p footage on games that run on composite. It is literally a godsend. Game's still fun as hell, and I think I overindulged with footage recorded so far. I also dabbled a bit in the Xbox 360 version of uh, Tekken 6 on my Xbox One X. And if you play that game regularly on 360, the load times are unbearably long. But on the X, they're instantaneous, which is a godsend, I will say that much. It's still fun. At least the fighting modes are. The big story mode called Scenario Campaign isn't so much. It's a 3D beat-em-up where you switch between free-running to Tekken controls as soon as enemies appear. It gets old really quickly, and the mode is way too long for what it is. I'll go more in depth when I properly review it, so stay tuned when that eventually drops. I'm also in talks with Low and playing some Tekken 7 matches on PC, so that'll be fun. I was actually planning on proper learning how to play as newcomer Lydia Sobieska, since she looks super sick, as well as Kazumi Mishima, the dead wife of Heihachi that summons a teleporting pet tiger for some of her moves. And yes, she literally does a tiger uppercut. Yep. That but no, to... no June Kazuma, though. No, no. Uh, I have a crackpot theory for uh, Tekken 8's plot involving June, but she's basically the red herring of the series, so who knows? It'll probably be a thing. Uh, I'll probably just stick with my main guy, Jin, who I've been playing for a good 20 years at this point. He's my boy. Love him. So yeah, that's all I got. Okay, um, cool. I'm Tekken still on sale for next two days, so yes, I don't, I don't get know. Get that shit. It's super we'll fun. See. We'll see. I don't. I don't. It's six dollars on Steam. 
Yeah, I guess. Uh, anyways, um, I've been feeling... I'm still feeling kind of like... I know I sound better, but, you know, those quieter moments is still not 100% there. So, um, I've just been feeling nostalgic and just wanting to relive old games. And obviously, last week I talked about Sonic Adventure and stuff like that. So, like, this week, I was really struggling what to play. Um, I, I started up, uh, and this is part of the nostalgia trip, uh, Digimon, the, the Digimon game that Tyler was uh, talking about, yes. Cyber Sleuth. So I started it up, and man, I don't know what to feel. I feel like I just started it, and I feel like this isn't what I was expecting, and I think it's because I was, I'm was i so used to the show, and like I wasn't expecting what I was expecting. It feels very much like Persona, or like my comparison is Tokyo Mirage Sessions. You have a hub, you can do things around the hub, and you're, there's not, like, and it looks like you only have specific dungeons where you go and actually fight stuff, and, uh, and that, like that. And so, I don't know how to feel about it yet. I think it has charm. Um, it was nice seeing, like, some Digimon I remember, uh, you know, like Palmon and Agumon and Gabumon right off the start. Um, seeking fucking one of the first NPCs you run into has a fucking machine drum on, which I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to feel about it yet because, like, I feel like leveling doesn't take long, but, like, I feel like there's, I don't know. I'm only, I'm barely into the second chapter. Um, I do like how there's, like, this, you have to basically solve cases, like, you work for, uh, without getting to spoiler territory, you ba- basically, an incident happens when your, your avatar is online causes you to work for a uh a par- i guess paranormal or supernatural uh detective Dude, agency cyber sleuth kyoko kuremi right and so basically you are just investigating weird shit around like uh this mall you your your uh home base is a mall which i find that that's kind of that's kind of funny uh and basically you have to solve mysteries in the real world that solve in the digital world um, I did fight my first boss, which is this weird, like, it, it didn't know what it looked like. It wasn't a Digimon at all, um, but I don't know what to make it's, of that. It's a neater. Um, they explain it more as the story goes on. Yeah, so I don't know how, because I feel like, am I, like, because, like, I generally want to think, like, am, am I grinding? And do I, should I be grinding? Because I already have a couple of Digimon to, like, to rookie status, I think. Um, I wish I could pull up my team right now, but, uh, like, I, like, it's... You don't capture them like Pokemon. You kind of have to run into them a certain amount of times, and then you can register them, and then uh, you it'll tell you Digivolution possible. And usually, at least early on, I'm sure it gets much more like complicated. Not complicated, but requirements go up more as they get Yeah, to, they do. Uh, Especially for Mega Mons, which uh, require more prerequisites. Right. So, like, right, like uh, I got, um, uh, God, the Seal Digimon. I got his pre-evolution. Uh, I don't remember his. I can't remember what Mama his Mama? name. I think so. Uh, but I only wanted him because I know he can, like, in the show, he turns into Zudamon, the cool dude with the hammer, and I want that guy on my team. Dude, you should see his mega. It is literally a Viking. Yeah, I, I'd imagine. So, like, I'm, I'm, I think I need to play it more. I think I, I stopped like at the perfect time where like. Okay, when I pick it back up, I can I can go from here. But I'm wondering like, what's the balance gonna be? Because I you have, you can level up Digimon and like they like either by battle like normal sense. It's pretty much like Pokemon. Uh, you have an attack, you you, you know four like multiple attacks. You have status effects. Um, you can have three party members out at once, which is nice. Um, are actually yes, I think yes, you can have three part three three yeah. team members out at once. But Literally you can only have. Can. You literally, but you can only have a certain amount of Digimon on your team based on how much memory you have. Does memory increase? It does. Um, uh, there's an okay. item that uh, you can increase your memory as you go along the story. Right. So, so far, I think your memory is at 20. So, if your Digimon's memory count, if your total memory count hits higher, you can't carry. So, like, you could, you could have a team of low level Mons be 20, but you're going to be like weak overall. You could have some strong ones. So I got Guilamon, uh, because he I couldn't evolve Guilamon's into Agumon. Super sick. He's my main. Yeah. I couldn't evolve into Agumon, so I was like, well, I recognize you. Um, I and like it was kind of hard because I was like, it shows you silhouettes. And what I do like about this game is that like, well, I can digivolve them into this thing, but you can also uh like undigivolve them. So like maybe you don't like that evolution, maybe you want your team composition to be different. You can undigivolve them to their baby forms and re-evolve them 
into another form that you think maybe might work better, or if you see it out in the field, like, yeah. oh, this means... Or you could just... I, this is where I, find, I feel I feel it's kind of weird. Like, why would you undigivolve something that's at a certain point when you can just capture a new one and just throw it into the... Into the uh, I can answer that question, actually. Uh, There's a hidden stat called ABI. I explained this before, but it only increases uh, when you evolve and uh, de-evolve your Digimons. And uh, specific evolutions, mostly the Megas, require a specific amount of ABI just to get them. So you're encouraged to evolve and de-evolve as much as you can so you can get that stat high up. It uh, It also influences their max level as well. Basically, you're telling me to basically try to go for every single form the Mon has? Um, I'm just saying to uh, evolve and de-evolve as much as possible so you can get that threshold. With, with that the way you don't have to worry with, about it later. With like a specific monster is what you're saying, right? More or less, yeah. Because okay. in my first playthrough, I wanted to get War Greymon as soon as possible. And through the game, I was just uh, naturally uh, making my Agumon uh, go up to Metal Greymon. And... Uh, my Metal Greymon had all the stats. It was at the right level. It had the right amount of attack and HP, all that. But the only stat it didn't have was ABI. It wasn't high enough. So, not knowing about that, I had to look it up. And I was like, oh shit, I have to uh, de-evolve in order to get this uh, hidden stat up. So, I had to backtrack a bit to uh, just so I can get this uh, stupid number up. And over time, after a bit of grinding, I was able to get War Greymon. Greymon. And, um, yeah, it, it eventually so, worked like, out, but it is kind of annoying. So, like, when would you say is a good upper time to de-digivolve something? Because then uh, you start over at level one. Like, is if it's a ro- if mine's is a rookie rank right now, that's not a... That, why should I de-digivolve it at this point? Uh, my basic strategy is uh, to have one of your main party members uh, be a champion in the early game. And once you start fighting uh, champions, then that's when you upgrade them to ultimate and uh, have some of your uh, lesser parties become champions and so on and so forth. And uh, you just go from there. It's basically the same progression as in the show. Yeah, where some achieved a level of status that the others didn't. Yeah. yeah. It just, it just, that is like, I hate that's a hidden stat and thank you for telling me, but like, that's like, it does if the game doesn't tell you about that like well why would i de digivolve other than wanting a new form yeah um, that was my problem at first you know so we'll see how that goes again i'm very early on um i mean presentation's nice um i mean it's 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 very dungeon it looks like i didn't realize it was like a dungeon crawler where like you kind of go through these set areas and they very like all the same so it looks nice uh, i'll say that much um uh, it's just adjusting to the aesthetic. I think I need to adjust the aesthetics in its gameplay. Uh, again, the turn-based combat is nice, um, but uh, yeah, I'll have to see how the combat system works. I'm just wondering how the balance between the digital world and the real world are gonna factor in. Because I was I was thinking this entire game was inside digital world, but it's not. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I do like that there's a shady corporation at it. Yeah. I know that was like a plot point in like season three in like the, the Tamers, I think it was called. Yeah, um, and that was also a thing in uh, Zero Two, I think. At least in the never, second half of that. Never watched anything past Tamers, my guy. So that's completely lost. That on was me. before. Was it? Zero, I don't. Yeah, Zero Two is the second season with. Uh... Oh, I never, I never referred it to as Zero Two. That's probably why I was confused. Um. So yeah, uh, I'll report back more. When I play it, but I kind of just like I felt over, I felt overwhelmed by it. Um. So. Um, and I, maybe just my headspace is, I don't know, like, not right for RPGs right now. Um, or at least, or at least RPGs that require certain things to pay attention to. Uh, so I want to, that led me to wanting to play something simple and, you know, fun. Something that I knew, um, that wasn't like an action game, or at least a hardcore action game. I, and I wasn't in the mood to play Zelda. So I was like, well, fuck, what do I, oh, there's Mega Man X right there. So I put in my cartridge of the Legacy Collection, I played through Mega Man X this weekend and you know that, that game's been ta- yeah, that game's been talked to death but like it's it's never not it's never uh it's always fun to pick up like and I didn't like I didn't do any challenge runs I, I actually it's the first time in a long time I just didn't go for the Hadouken because I, I realized like well I always suck at it anyway so there's no point in me going wasting time to 
go get it. I've already completed this game. I don't need to do it this time. But it, it's it's still super fun, like, um, and like how fast it is and how unique and how like that that soundtrack still kicks so much yes. ass. <laughs> like, it's it. it's 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 crazy and how good it is. Even the st- the tracks that people don't talk about uh, still still rock out to this day and. Um, it's always a pleasure being able to kick Sigma's ass now without even like sweating. I remember when I when I first started streaming back in like 2016 and like I did a Buster only run of of X and like I managed to beat uh, Sigma Buster only, which I, I beat him before but never um, never Buster only. And so to be able to beat the game like that was an accomplishment. This time I just said occasionally I did Buster if I had no choice, but I'm like I was confident enough to to do it. But I was like you know I don't I, I just want to kind of go through this so. Week this week this week this week this week this it was still yep. fun. Um, I even started up X two today, uh, just because, and I feel like X two is severely underrated by, like that, because you hear nothing about X, and X is really good. But I think as a preference wise, I really like X two. Uh, the weapons, the some of the power ups are really cool. The armor pieces, I love the um, the the the. The, the 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 buster upgrade where you shoot two energy beams at once and it just super dope. Oh, it's just it's 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 awesome and I like some of the I like the bosses a lot more I think the music's really good uh, I know some people complain about the Maverick hunters but I'm like they they aren't that bad all you have to do you, you know can it's put just, zero it's, together like it's a Lego it's cool yeah and and even then like even like and I learned this because I managed to I managed to save zero um but like I learned this like the hard way it's like well uh you know even if you don't save zero immediately he comes back anyways so it's like it just ba- all it basically means is you have an extra boss fight to do before sigma you fight against zero and i've never done that and just just because i'm used to fighting the maverick hunters i fought them all and got to pieces anyways but i kind of want to do another run at some point where like i don't save him and i have to do that boss fight against him because i've never seen it but i know it's a thing uh but then of course the real zero comes back i don't know how he does but he does. Um, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, unfortunately, I, I think I think that's it. I didn't play really any more anything else. Um, at least that I would deem interesting. Uh, it's it's one of those things, weeks where, like, I want to start something, but I just, like, again, it was hard enough to start Cyber Sleuth, let alone uh, start anything else, and X just felt like the easiest thing to do. Um, ah. I, don't, I, I, yeah. I did want to shout out that uh, me and Ben started streaming uh, Resident Evil 5 last week. I didn't mention it. Before. Oh, yeah. Um, and oh, I don't right, know if you yeah. were, so I figured I'd, I'd bring it up now. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, I personally am struggling with the controls. I'm just, I'm not a big fan of like the Resident Evil tank control type thing. Um, but yeah, it's, not even, it's not even tank. Well, I guess it is tank controls. It's kind of tank controls. Just, um, I, I had a good time. The controls are definitely, I won't lie, they are taking getting used to, but once I started playing it, it was it was like, oh, okay, here we are, um, mm-hmm. remembering the buttons and everything like that. Uh, I will say I do love my moment, um, and I should have streamed it, but I just wasn't in the mood to do it, um, of where we meet, meet Justin and I meet this chainsaw motherfucker, and I literally told Justin, leave him to me, I got this, mm-hmm. and Justin had to deal with the cannon fodder, and I had to, I basically one-on-one this chainsaw clown and it was pretty cool i i was expecting to die or get hit or something but no i you know being able to take him out was pretty cool uh again i, I watched that clip back justin you did you look like he shot me on purpose or on the barrels on purpose when i was there so wow um, i did not know you were there until you popped out after it was already exploded just saying mm-hmm. you can see the clip i'm clearly doing you can see the clip i'm clearly doing a somersault kick to somebody and then he shoots uh, so just, just you go watch the clip and be, be the judge. But it, it's a fine game. The funny thing is we almost didn't know if it was going to work because the game downloader for me just fine. It looks great, runs great. Of course, it's a 2005 game mm-hmm. running on this new bad boy. <laughs> but uh, apparently I didn't know this. It uses um, games for Windows Live service, which you don't remember. I never played that era of PC gaming, so I don't know. But uh, apparently, uh, it does. It didn't work for me. It wouldn't launch. It just wouldn't launch. So all I had to do was download, uh, like the newest patch. The, the latest patch was like 2018, just to get it functioning, and it worked, no problem. So if you play Resident Evil Five, you bought it for the sale, and it's not working. Either there's a fan patch you can do, which you can go that way if you want. Uh, the the uh, the Games for Windows Live thing was just the first thing I saw, so I was just like, I'll just download that. 
you know, it's it's safe. It's got to be safe. So not that I don't think the fan patch is safe, because obviously it would be taken down, or you would heard about it by now. But yeah, and it looks great. It, it's, I was surprised on how how great it looks and just how like intense the game is like it's definitely not a horror game like say classic re or even re4 so far but it's definitely tense mm -hmm. like there's always like because like, they're always sending you as i imagine this is even more so at that time because you had never seen so many enemies come at you at once um uh but it, i won't lie part of it part during specific times and especially the bats it felt like i was playing house of the dead versus resident <laughs> evil based on how many times we were shooting up in the air at something but it's a good time so far, and I, I could imagine playing this in single player being okay, but I think it's definitely yeah. a game made for uh, co-op slash multiplayer. All right, rather say multiplayer because if you play co-op, it's actual split screen, which that looks that split screen's not good in my opinion. Yeah, that would be. Um, yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm hoping we'll get to finish it. I forgot to look up how how long it is. Can't but... wait to see you guys fight Wesker. We're not gonna fight Wesker. Spoilers. Um, uh, it's fucking yeah, RE5. Everybody, I know. Every, every, everybody knows you fight Wesker and Chris fuck boulders Redfield push, pushes a boulder into killing him. Um, or who knows, right? Maybe Wesker's alive at the end of RE8. I don't know. Maybe you should go play RE8 and find out for yourself, clowns. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, me and Justin will be streaming that uh, a couple weeks before Skyward Sword comes out, which I think is like in two weeks now. Which yeah, but it comes out on a Friday, so it'll still be like, you know, uh, it'll okay. still be a Thursday there before the game's out. Right. Okay. So look, look for that. We'll, we'll stream it for for a bit. I wanted to stream RE6, uh, just because. But I feel like maybe RE5 is going to be better overall because I think it's a much more fun game, uh, mechanically at least. So hey, it's the first time I've played it. So uh, I think it. I think it's going to work out. Um. All right. That's going to do it for the new section or the new section. Let's just talk about the game section. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about the news of the week. So sit tight and come on back. Punch in my butt. All right, so I'm looking it up right now, and it looks like Resident Evil 5 is 10 to 12 hours. So, like, just it's beelining the main long. story, we might be able to do it. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, we had three hours. I mean, we didn't make a lot of progress, but maybe. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let me get the stuff up. Uh, are we just going down the line? Like Mortal Kombat yeah. 11, um, Sushi Ghost. No, that's well, it's, it's That's last. Yeah. It's starting with uh, the Final Fantasy, your, your news. Okay. I'll, eh, as long as I know what it's starting with, that's fine. Swoop. All right. We're back. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the news section of the Charge Games Gamescast. We don't have a lot of news this week, but I think that works out because we had a pretty fun topic uh, that's going for us. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about it. Uh, at E3 2021, this past, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, it was revealed at the god-awful Square Enix conference <laughs> that the original first six Final Fantasy games would be getting pixel, quote-unquote, pixel remasters coming to iPhones, or I guess I should say mobile devices, mobile devices and Steam, no mention of consoles. So a lot of people led the speculation on what exactly coming out, what's going on. So um, we actually have some information. Uh, it seems that uh, the pixel remasters of Final Fantasies 1, 2, and 3 will be coming uh, at the at, as of July 28th. Uh, and four, five, and six, they have Steam pages, uh, but there's no in, in, that we can't see what they officially look like, other than they're coming soon. And if you go to IGN's uh, website, you can get a better look at what these uh, screenshots look like. Um, some of the key features include these features include update, universally updated 2D pixel graphics, including the iconic Final Fantasy character designs by Kazuko Shibuya, the original artist and current collaborator. Legendary Final Fantasy composer Nobu Omatsu is overseeing the rearranged soundtracks for these games to have. Uh, Ensure a faithful Final Fantasy style. There'll also be more improved gameplay, including modernized UI, auto battle options, and more. Supplemental ex uh, extras like bestiary, illustration gallery, music players will also be included with each title. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then there's a presentation about it, discussing it. Um, 
with uh, with Hironobu Sakaguchi, the uh, one of the original creators of Final Fantasy. Um, they discuss more about these upcoming games that will be released in PC mobile devices. The Final Fantasy uh, Pixel Remaster is not a collection of games. Each one will be sold separately. There is no mention of whether these games will be released all at the same time or if only take off a few. Obviously, we know that if they're coming out. Three of them are coming out at the end of this month. So, yeah, I didn't think we would get them this quick, honestly. I figured, like, a fall release, but at the end of this month, you're going to be able to play the not good fun. I mean, that's bad to say. Uh, Final Fantasy 1 is actually not bad, especially if you're playing the PSP version. So, Final Fantasy um, 3 is looks... great. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's... Yeah. 3 is the best yeah. one of the original 3. That would... I guess, but... Sure, I'd and the final one. part, I would say. I mean, yeah, the final wow. dungeon is trash, but... Like overall, the game actually has you know more story and. I think like... it depends on which version you're playing, honestly. Like if you're talking about the NES ones, and I would say I would say, like probably like just by default, but I'd rather play Final Fantasy One PSP over any version of Final Fantasy Three. So I like the the three uh the three D version on the DS also. Final Fantasy Three D. I think that is what they called it. Our... All right, did we? I don't. I, it doesn't mention anywhere here on prices, um, but I will say it looks like Square is definitely putting more effort into this than they did those mobile ports. Pretty much all they did was kind of just change the sprite design a little bit. Uh, the one thing that I think people can agree negatively on is the fact that the font that they're using for the in game for like, and maybe you can change it. I don't see anything, but the font that they're using for the for the battle menus is awful. Yeah. There's, I don't think yeah, there's anything great. hiding around it. It's too, it's too small. Um, like I don't know, like I don't, I don't know who decided this. Maybe it's a prototype, maybe or not prototype. Maybe it's like a stand-in. Like this is just, you can change it later, but it just doesn't. Uh, it just hurts my eyes to look at it. It's but, just so jarring because it's like this nice, you know, crisp, uh, like remastered pixel art, and then this clearly not pixelized font, but only in the the like gradient boxes where text is because the on screen text, like when you hit and do damage and stuff is still like a different pixeled font. Yeah. Yeah. It's just bad design. Yeah. I will say the, the, the overall like art looks like the, the remasters themselves. They look really, really good. I think Mm -hmm. my favorite instance of it is, uh, the Final Fantasy six screenshot, which is uh, Terra wedge and Biggs overlooking, yeah. The uh Narsh, is it right? Yeah. Mr. Final Mr. Final Fantasy Six. Yeah. Um yeah, you can actually see more of the city uh in the background, which you, I think you could ve- you could kind of see it in the Super Nintendo version in the GBA Barely. version. Barely. Here uh you see like the whole town in, in the ravine. It looks it looks re- it looks really nice, but also still looks familiar, but they don't look like they're washed out mm-hmm. counterparts uh from the mobile ports a couple a couple years ago, so um, and I, I'm really looking forward to playing Final Fantasy V, um, yeah. which is a better version of Final Fantasy III. Uh, I'm going to put that out there right now. Um, I mean, that's valid. So, like, I'm looking forward to that one. I'm, I'm kind of glad these aren't a collection, um, just because I don't have no interest in playing Final Fantasy II or three. And, I, you know, if I, maybe if I want to play one, I can do that. And, you know, maybe that, that should be fun. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad I can pay play final fantasy five and six, four five and six although i probably won't buy four just because i have a pretty good version of it already on my psp but that's a me thing yeah i pretty much just want five i don't want to try out six because that's the only one i haven't really played yet what six yeah, is the I best i mean i'd probably get six just to have like the definitive version of it basically um but i don't see myself like replaying it right away uh, okay. five I'd want to get to to just play because I haven't played that since like the SNES version. The 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 the, the fan translated one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I have that too. I have it both. Uh, hold on. Um. Where are you? I know you were here. I only have that. the PS1 version that you can get from the PS3 store. Mm. I mean, I had what is that? Uh, anthology. I think I had the PS1. Uh, collection with like five and six or whatever, but though that those versions are trash because of the loading times, so I didn't play very much of it. 
Yeah, yeah I can't even uh, get it because um, the disc from mine is scratched pretty badly. Oh, no. No. Well, uh, I, I won't lie. Like, I know they're going to be played for mobile. For, right now, I'm, I would be surprised if at some point Square is not going to put these on consoles or at least on Nintendo Switch. It just, again, that's, that's the biggest eyesore. But I will say, hey, uh, mobile phones have definitely improved uh, for quality in terms mm -hmm. of, like, how they present games and how they run stuff. So I would, I would like, mind playing Final Fantasy VI on my phone, you know, since I'd rather have it portably. Um, yeah. You know, and I and I have a way to play the uh, to the the old the SNES version on my Super Nintendo Classic. So um, or on uh, I even have the DS the 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 the, the advanced version. So. Um, yeah, yeah I, with, I, with I just, my mobile controller, I'd probably get it on on mobile too. Uh, the good thing is that you don't need um, uh, a controller really with this since it's just a you know simple turn base. Not well, yeah. really requiring you for com complicated inputs. But it still feels. Um, but uh, do we, I don't think we have a price. Uh, the entire the... collection is on Steam for like seventy five dollars, um, which would make That's... each game about twelve dollars. Twelve dollars a game. That's not bad. I mean, granted, some people will buy the whole collection. I thought it was twenty dollars, but maybe that's maybe that was in other places. Um, uh, but yeah, if it's twelve dollars to pl to play them, that's I would I would definitely double dip for Final Fantasy five and six for mm -hmm. both Steam and and mobile device and my and my phone. I mean, There's with how really updated they are and how much better they are than past versions on you know various stores that were more than twelve dollars, it's not bad. There's yeah, new music, just, there's uh, new visuals, like it's it's all there. Yeah, they added the bestiary, which like like that's a big thing. Yeah. Um the only thing is they so. they removed some content from later versions. Like the you know, the GBA uh ports had like end game dungeons and that kind of thing, and like a few I think uh Final Fantasy Six had a few new espers and stuff, and none of that stuff is gonna be there. These are faithful recreations of their original the games. original yeah, um, which means Final Fantasy IV is gonna be piss poor easy because of just. I really hope, I really hope they that that means you may not want to play this version of Final Fantasy IV because Final Fantasy IV we got in America. It, again, it could maybe maybe it's based off the Japanese version, so hold, let's cross your fingers with that at least because the Final Fantasy version, Final Fantasy IV version that we got, they removed the command stuff that you got for each character, which is. Those commands aren't exactly great, but they help make the characters feel unique. Um, also, they made it easier in the in in the U.S. version. So hopefully, it's based off the Japanese uh, release versus uh, the the U.S. release. What we got at least for four, yeah, not necessarily six. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next bit of news. Um, as we're dealing with a hacking situation. Um, this is courtesy of Bloomberg. Ooh, we're going to go ahead and high points now. Um, at least I hope you can read. Yes, you can. Thank you. Uh, robbing the Xbox vault inside a $10 million gift card cheat. $10 hmm. million. Dollars. Yes. Uh, the Xbox gift cards come with came with a string of 25 letters and numbers. These digits zones as a 5x5 five five code were sent in an email, but they were no different from numbers and letters etched onto gift cards hanging off tall racks near the checkouts at aisles at CBS Target, arrayed in a Rubik's Cube of colors. These stores sell them on behalf of Apple, Applebee's, Disney, Domino's, pretty much every other company you can think of, including Microsoft Corporation, which markets its cars under the Xbox brand. The cars themselves, of course, are worthless, but each 5x5 five five code responds to a dollar amount. In this case, the code, as long as code, I'm not going to read it, was worth... $15 towards the purchase of anything that Microsoft sold online, video games, Office, and Windows software, Lenvo, Lenovo, laptops, Sonos, speakers, and the like. In this way, the gift cards can be bought, thought of as a sort of a digital currency, not unlike Bitcoin. The comparison may seem silly, but given that gift cards today are, uh, given that gift cards today are of the bygone, uh, bygone era of Blockbuster video. What? Excuse me? The comparison? There's still given one Blockbuster. No, but like gift cards, gift cards date to the bygone. I feel like gift cards are evergreen. I don't. I feel like that's trying to say that gift cards are dated, but maybe I'm reading it wrong. Um, but today there are online marketplaces where anyone can trade gift card codes for Bitcoin and then turn spoils into cash. I didn't realize that was a thing. 
These marks, these markets inevitably attract speculators and become trades if we get out there together. Vladimir Kushevich received the $15 code a few weeks ago before Christmas in 2017 among a batch of 20 others worth $300 altogether. But the engineer who went by Volva for short and was in his mid-20s hadn't paid for the Xbox cards themselves, nor were they some early holiday present from the relatives. Kushevich uh, had recently begun a full-time job at Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Washington, testing the company's e-commerce infrastructure. His team's focus was to stimulate the purchase of Microsoft's online store. This meant making a lot of pretend pretend purchases in the store. If Kuchvik added a Dell PC to shopping cart, he used a follow credit card. Microsoft provided complete transaction document any errors. So someone knew the purchase was fake and wouldn't deliver the device to his desktop. At least that was supposed to happen. And this is, I guess, where it gets interesting. The Kuchvik found a bug that would change his life. A flaw so stupidly obvious that he couldn't bring himself to report it to his managers. He noticed that whenever he tested the purchase of gift cards, the Microsoft Store dispensed real 5x5 codes. It dawned on him he could generate virtually unlimited codes, all for free. A former senior engineer on Kuchvik's team, who, like other sources in this story, spoke on the condition of anonymity to avoid being publicly associated with his wrongdoing that followed, says that this is the Halo Age equivalent of frontier banking leaving its vault unlocked. Sooner or later, someone's going to try to get away with twenty dollars or taking twenty dollars. Uh, when they don't get caught, they figure all these the six guys stand at the safe one night and one other one, no other employees around. So yeah, it looks like it just kind of snowballs into there. Um, and uh, yeah, and the fact that it's being traded for Bitcoin. This is a really long article, mm-hmm. um, but that's sort of like just the basis of it all. Like that's that's amazing. Like I'm I'm applauding that and also horrified by that. That it went on for this long. Wow. So he worked for Microsoft to, like, basically check for scams. And then he did a scam while working for Microsoft's scam team. I mean, I know fucking people, I've, I've seen fucking people at Walmart with the Lost Revenge team fucking... They're supposed to do that shit. I've seen them take shit before, so... Like, well, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, I, you're less likely to get caught when you're the one on that team. Yeah, no. Who's gonna suspect you? I'm like, unless somebody right. actively looks at what you're doing, and you know how to get um, around the. Yeah, exactly. Um, hell, I know how to do that too. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, this is this is wild. Um, I I just can't believe like it went unnoticed for this long. Let alone, I didn't know that he was trading this like for for uh, bitcoins and shit. Yeah. <sighs> But he was caught, right? Um, yeah, so after combing through CVS, C- CSV data, Microsoft found that one of Kuchvik's official test accounts had bought some Xbox gift cards illegitimately in 2017. More suspiciously, Kuchvik was connected to another branch of stolen codes that had been used at Microsoft's web store to buy three high-end GeForce graphics. See, that's where you fuck up. Mm-hmm. That's where you fuck up when you rob shit. Stay you small. Don't, you don't fucking start buying like expensive cars and like, no. You stay small. Nobody's gonna fucking notice except for the IRS. Yeah, and nobody then, has changed the security on the one dollar bill since its invention. Yep. You could counterfeit as many one dollar bills as you wanted, and no one would know because they don't have any kind of like strip or anything on them. Right. Stay but small. The second you fucking the fucking second you start bragging, and the second you start like, oh yeah, look, I I bought a new car. I. I bought, I got this, I got a new computer, I bought a new TV. I'm like, hold up. How the fuck were you able to get, like, there's no way. Yeah. Like, somebody's going to put it together. Stay fucking small. Also, uh, just to put a disclaimer, don't steal kids. Um, unless you can't, unless you won't get caught. Um, <laughs> but steal from Walmart all the time. You kind of ruined that Walmart disclaimer. The yeah, whatever. <laughs> steal. Go ahead, steal. Just don't get caught. Be smart about it. If you're going to steal, be smart about it and steal small. Like, seriously. Um, R slash don't hurt legal anybody. life tips. Yeah, don't don't hurt anybody. Just put it in your pocket. I guarantee you the Walmart employee doesn't care that you put that Godzilla toy in your pants. I guarantee, or put that Hot Wheel in your pants. I don't care. Just I took away. so much free food from Walmart when I worked there. Yeah, you should. I just walked to the deli, um, grabbed my food, and then walked to the back. Nice. Didn't care. All right, so let's move on to something else. Um. We have an update on Ghost of Tsushima, the critically acclaimed exclusive PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4 game that came out only a year ago. 
obviously with the PS5 out and a lot of games getting their quote of quote upgrade versions. Ghost of Tsushima is officially receiving theirs coming uh, both on PS5 and PS4. Or a, okay, rather, a director's cut is coming on both PS4 and PS5 on August 20th. Um, and so, uh, basically, it le- uh, we're gonna it's gonna get a new island, Iki Island. Um, uh, it's gonna have more trophies. Uh, and then here's here's more interesting stuff. This is like the PS5 exclusive. So I think both PS4 version and PS5 versions will be getting Iki Island, so a whole new area to explore uh, for the director's cut. Uh, while direct, and this is again, this is for the PS5 version exclusively. While directors cut players on both PS4 and PS5 will have access to the Iki content, PlayStation 5 players will have access to a few additional features. I've heard your feedback to talk about the lack of Japanese lip sync in the original version of Ghost of Tsushima, and it's something we worked hard to address in this new release. Thanks to PS5's ability to render cinematics in real time, cutscenes in Ghost of Tsushima and on Iki Island on PS5 will now offer lip sync for Japanese voiceover, which I think is that's that's really cool, and that's the power of PS5. Um, uh, we're also happy to come to Ghost of Tsushima and Ghost of Tsushima Legends, and the new Iki Island expansion will all take advantage of haptic feedback and adaptive triggers in Director's Cut. There will also be enhancements to 3D audio, which unfortunately Justin can't enjoy, but <laughs> for others, you can't. Why are you going to call me out? Uh, well, I'm just saying you can't. Like, you literally can't. No, I know. Um, it's, it's true. Uh, it also be enhancements to 3D on PS5 as well as drastically improved load times, 4K resolution options, and frame rate targeting 60 FPS. All right. Um, other up and some other updates. Uh, Director's Cut. Anyone who's already owned Ghost of Tsushima will be able to download a patch containing some new updates. Once again, many of these updates are directly thinking of the cons- thinking. All players receive a patch with some new accessibility options for alternate control layouts as well as options to the enable a target lock on during combat. As for, and for the person who tweets this all the time asking us an option to hide your quiver during gameplay, yes, we'll be adding that too. Finally, for Ghost of uh, uh, Tsushima Legend fans, um, We'll be at releasing new updates, including all new mode that we're working, excited to work in detail. Welcome. All new Ghost of Tsushima Legends updates will be available. No additional charge. Okay. And then pre-orders and upgrades. It will launch on August 20th for $69.99 on PS5, $59.99 on PS4. You'll be able to pre-order digitally at the places to physical versions for your retailers. If you pre-order at participating retailers, you'll receive a digital mini soundtrack uh, with the tracks and original Ghost of Tsushima, as well as the two new songs from Iki Island. The digital art book featuring section uh section of art of Ghost of Tsushima as well as ten new pieces of Iki Island conception art. Pre order at PS uh the PlayStation Store anytime you get access to download the PS4 version of Ghost of Tsushima immediately so you can start experiencing the main game early and transfer your progress to pick it up where you left off in the director's cut launches in August. So you already own Ghost of Tsushima on PS5 on PS4, uh you pre order director's cut upgrade to for just twenty dollars. The upgrade will be available starting on August twentieth. Um if you bought the director's cut on PS4, you'll be able to upgrade the director's cut on PS5 on PS5 for $9.99. You can also upgrade directly from the original Ghost of Tsushima on PS4 to director's cut on PS5 for $29.99. So, yeah. The only thing I don't I like it, here is that you have to pay to upgrade to the director's cut PS5. Like this, I think this is the first game to not do a free PS5 upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Well, yeah, I, I think so. Um, I'm just worried it's going it to start a trend. Pro- I mean, I would think it's because of, like, a lot of the other games, most of it was, like, not not to say that it wasn't minimal, but other games were not adding a whole new area. And yeah, but this is Director's manually- Cut PS4 to Director's Cut PS5. So the whole new area and stuff is already there. I also I still think that's attributed to why they're charging so much, why they're charging anything, because it's it is a whole new area, and they probably feel like they have to charge it just according to the budget. I mean, why else wouldn't another game do it? Because Doom, um, I mean, I, uh, for Horizon hasn't had its update, but I mean, just play the PC version at this point. Um, and it got a War get an update, I think. Um, Last of Us Two got it got its update. I think I think part of the reason why they're charging anything is because of uh, probably a lot more similar to the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. A lot more involvement went into this upgrade than anything we've seen before, and I assume it will be a trend because a lot of people will see it as like, well, people will pay m- way more money for uh, convenience and having new features on their new console. 
Well, I guess I, I can kind of see the point of that because this shows um, if you already own Ghost of Tsushima on PS4, you can upgrade to the director's cut on PS4 for 20 bucks. If you bought director's cut PS4, you upgrade to director's cut PS5 for 10 or you can upgrade directly from PS4, like, you know, base game to director's cut PS5 for 30 so it's the same price no matter how you do it, I guess. It's just if you want to go from the original PS4 game to the director's cut on PS5, it's 30 Like, they don't have where you can just, like... Yeah, it, it's... There's nothing where you can, like, get the PS5 director's cut automatically unless you don't already own it and then it's you know 60 so it's just, it's yeah. kind of confusing yeah yeah because it says like so like if you bought a director's cut um like for ps4 and then you can upgrade to ps5 so if you have a ps5 and then you buy it because there's only the ps4 version right now to upgrade it will be five dollars um, or be ten dollars. Yeah. Um, and you can also up- upgrade directly from the original Ghost of Tsushima. So just no director's cut. So basically, you're paying for the director's cut. Uh, for the director's for PS4 director's cut PS5 for thirty dollars. So pretty much they're combining the pre-order money and the uh, and the just the the, the like up like um. Uh, director's cut, director's cut into one thing. If you're just coming off, if you don't want to get the the director's cut for PS4 immediately, so yeah. like, it looks like the point is because like games are getting more expensive. So like the game is releasing at sixty bucks on PS4 and seventy on PS5. So you're paying that difference when you upgrade. Pretty much. And but I fair. still think, yeah, and like I said, I think they're charging anyways, just because of the. I guarantee you, Iki Island is probably like. Like, the lip syncing was probably, like, easier, but, like, they're literally creating a whole new area for you to explore. And then they're, they also, they mentioned the Legends, which is their multiplayer mode. They're probably adding stuff to that. I guarantee you that factors all into that. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine, but I'm just saying, like, games are expensive, and they probably calculate in their budget, like, this is how much we have to charge, and that's what we're going to roll with. I know, it's totally fine. I just don't want this to become the norm, where they start charging for the PS5 upgrades, because that would suck. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, I think, like Danos said, it's inevitable dog that's exactly what he said is it? um yes hmm. avengers uh, avengers age of ultron that must, have been the, Shakespeare. that must have been Fuck the director's it. cut yeah uh, I, what, i'm inevitable dog um <laughs> i should reboot the avengers in like 30 years i want to play thanos um no th- right. that's thanos as played by randy jackson <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's a no from me, dog. <laughs> I want, and I, I now want Randy Jackson edited over Josh Brolin, Thanos, yeah. ASAP. All right, we got our last bit of news, also concerning DLC. This is coming from our good friend Kale Michael. Shout out to Mister uh, Verified Esports. Um, NetherRealm Studios has officially said there will be no more Mortal Kombat 11 DLC. And out in the void, you heard a million Mortal Kombat fans cry out in English. And it continued to cry even more. Um, so, uh, I, 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 so this is going to now talk about it. Um, NetherRealm Studios put an end to community speculation about the next wave of Mortal Kombat 11 DLC. They announced that the company is focusing on this next project. And additional content won't be coming to the game. Um, they even put out a tweet basically saying the same thing. Um, this doesn't mean the developers are completely abandoning the game, but there, are, there will be no more DLC, including characters being worked on. Uh, the writing was on the wall for once NRS dropped Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, a version of the game that was bundled in the majority of games at the end of last year. The version featured all Combat, uh, Combat 1 DLC, Fighters, the Aftermath Expansion characters, and the Combat Pack 2 DLC that was announced alongside with it. Um, of course, that, that that was a pack that added John Rambo. Melina Rain was the final piece of, the char- uh, piece of character DLC for the game. The classic MK movie skin pack was released in November and will end up being the last DLC, big DLC overall. Um, of course, it was released in over in 2019, uh, with it, uh, it will, and it will have, have a total playable roster of 37 playable characters, 25 on the base roster, and 12 DLC characters. The only update players should expect moving forward are balance patches and fixes. 
The two-year support window isn't uncommon for NetherRealm Studios, has been used for a majority of studios' games, including Mortal Kombat X, and both Injustice Gods Among Us games. Based on the track record, we'll likely hear about the next NRS project before the end of the year. Don't know if details are available at this time. So, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 has officially ended its its development time. And, like, I felt, having seen the Mortal Kombat... I know you guys probably don't follow Mortal Kombat Twitter like I do, but, like, how, how considering how much of fucking babies they are... The whole Molina thing and how they constantly harass Ed Boon for like care for characters and stuff like that. I'm like, y'all don't, y'all didn't fucking deserve shit anyways. Yeah. Um, and like some of y'all are acting like this game was incomplete or didn't have this or that. I'm like, motherfuckers gave us two full a full story mode uh, expansion story mode which has never been done before. Fucking twelve DLC characters, twenty five complete playable characters. Each with their three different fighting styles that you could customize, fully a a, a great online mo- a single player mode um, that allows you to unlock stuff, which is problematic at the beginning, but they fixed it. Like, I understand not liking a lot of people don't uh, for, a lot of people don't like MK11 for a lot of things, but I'm just like, like, and I know like now they're twisting their words and like, well, we gave like they promised this would be the longest supported game and it still only lasted two years. I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm perfectly fine with it. It like, got some I got impressive the support. Like, yeah, it, it got a lot of support. Like, like that doing that second story mode thing was not was probably not easy. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, and like adding all those characters in, um, and stuff like that. Like, and how again, how visually, at least graphically wise, it looks. Um, like, like I, I don't know what you guys want, and the fact that I immediately saw people begging for Injustice Three, y'all are gonna be bitching about this the same we all did with Injustice Two, the same we all did with MKX, and the same thing y'all did with this game. So no, I, 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 I honestly hope that there is no Injustice Three. As as much as I loved Injustice Two, I really hope they make something else and not Injustice Three, because y'all don't deserve Injustice Three. Yeah, and it would be nice to see NetherRealm Studios. Uh break through this uh trend that they've been going through with their fighting games like they brought us uh mortal kombat 9 then injustice then mortal kombat x then injustice 2 then mortal kombat 11 so hopefully we'll see something different from them i want to see that, that uh that rumored marvel versus dc game that'd be sick i think i i would I, I know ed has talked about like he, he wants to work at something that's not a fighting game so I don't know if they'll be able to do that, considering mm. Warner Brothers controls like their contracts. I'm like, you print us money by making fighting games. You're making a fucking fighting game. So, I mean, Warner Brothers is under new management, so who knows what they'll allow. Right, but I mean, like they make Mortal Kombat in another home series makes money, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So they're gonna wanna they want to do something that makes money. So I don't know if they'll let Ed and his team make something that they want because. People may not because of how MK M- another round player uh, fans are. They may not buy it because it's not MK or Injustice. Although Unless it's that Marvel. There, there's been yeah, I mean, Marvel vs DC people would buy that, but there's been like Mortal Kombat games that aren't just straight fighting games, and not all of them have been terrible. Like Shaolin Monks is pretty decent. Um, that's the only one that's so, been decent. Well, that's fair. Uh, so I mean, there's a possibility maybe they would dabble in something like that. I, I wouldn't even want them to do anything MK related. Like, do something like I, if if I would if like I would want them to do something original, something that they never tackled before. And like, I know that's probably dangerous considering how many like how many times the studio has done that and it falls flat on their asses and you know and stuff like that. But I would like them to see something try try a genre they're not familiar with and see how that would go. Something maybe that Ed's been itching it for like years to do, but he can't do it because Mortal Kombat's printing those checks. Gotta gotta keep gotta keep you know mom and dad happy you know. Yeah. Do it. Do a full kart racing game. Yeah, right. That would be yeah. <laughs> that was a dope side mode. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was in yeah. Deception, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because that one yeah. had uh, chess combat and kart combat or whatever. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, because like MK, where nobody nobody takes it seriously anymore. So let's just put this silly shit in there, which I kind of wish fighting games had modes like that now. Yeah. You know, versus. Uh, Tournament uh, Two has that uh, weird volleyball game. Are you sure you're not talking about that? All thinking of Dead or Alive? 
No, the in the Wii U version of Tekken Tag Two, there's a there's a volleyball mini game, and it's the dumbest shit ever, and I love it. Hmm. I think you're thinking of that are alive. Okay, um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, cry, another round fans cry, y'all. Not everybody. I mean, obviously, you guys know how much I love Mortal Kombat 11. I got like 300 hours in that game in two years. Dang. Like, I I got my money's worth with it on the Switch version, nonetheless. Although now this makes you kind of want to like maybe I'll buy the PC version at some point and like just got the grind. And now that the grinding is a lot easier, that they made the requirements to get like go through cha- character towers, get costumes a lot easier. Um, I think I wouldn't mind playing it on 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 this bitch right here. But I've got it on PC. And, just saying. Yeah, I know. But you don't want to fight me anyway, so it's like, what's the... Uh, you, you, are you throwing your hat out there? I, I mean, I would. might on PC. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that if I buy it, and then we're going to play... And, and You're going to hold me to a maybe? Okay. I'm going to hold you to a maybe. <laughs> um, because I know you, I'll be like, you ready to go? And then, like, and then I'll, I'll do a thing that you're not going to like, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. All right, uh, I think that's going to do it for the news, right? So we're going to go into our last topic of the night, which I think is a pretty fun one. We didn't have, we didn't put a vote to this one because it seemed, we were all unanimous on what it should be. So our topic for tonight is dream sequels. Obviously, uh, as we've been gamers since at least the mid early to mid-90s, we have seen many games get sequels. Many games not get sequels. So the question is, you are in charge now to make the, the, the game, the, the dream sequel you've always wanted. It, and I'm going to put this out now, so maybe this will fuck up your pick or not. It, the game could theoretically have already had a sequel, and you could still make that sequel you wanted. Or it could be a sequel to a game that never that was going to happen, but didn't happen. So, I don't think Justin's prepared. Because I'm calling him out for it right now. Justin, what is your dream sequel? What game okay. is your dream sequel? So my dream sequel, picture this. Okay. The proper follow-up to Metroid Fusion. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, Yeah, oh, I was going to say. We're, we're getting it. Oh, uh, yes. Ha, 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 No, seriously, that... Ha, 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 ha. I mean, I did a video on it. That was my answer until like two weeks ago. So it, it um, became reality. Yeah, it is a little tough for this one, but um, I think what I would want is a proper um, Super Mario RPG two. Mm. Uh, so Interesting. that was originally a thing, and it became Paper Mario. But, like, you know, the beta of that and everything started with Super uh, Mario RPG 2. Um, and I would love to see that Square crossover again with... What are y'all both looking at? <laughs> looking at my game shelf. Oh. <laughs> you, like, both turned around at the same time. Yeah, like, I was looking at my game shit, too. I know you're, you live kind of close to each other, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyway... A proper square crossover that doesn't necessarily return to like that same story and stuff, but I'd love to see a similar art style because it's still, it holds up and like that, like kind of almost like a, uh, like a claymation type art style, I think would look really cool in HD. Um, similar to like Link's Awakening HD, but less like ceramic um and more kind of like claymation storybook type uh so not flat you know but anyway um and have like proper like full on rpg mechanics not the kind of half ass stuff that paper mario does these days um origami king was great still not totally an rpg uh and actually take some risks like introduce you know new characters again bring back gino ideally uh milo can stay in the trash where he belongs but bring back gino um and some other new characters and tell like an epic original story like set in the mushroom kingdom or not i don't have a lot of like specifics on what i'd want from it um i just want an actual nintendo square crossover 
where Miyamoto backs off and lets Square make something crazy. Um, because I'm tired of this, like, you can't even have legitimate companions. It has to just be, here's a bomb. Here's a Goomba. Like, there's hey, nothing. Hey, Bobby, you shut up about Bob. No, that's true. Bobby died so that we could live. He's he's a hero. But in general, <laughs> the companions have been trash. Um, and I just, I don't consider Paper Mario to be the Mario RPG sequel. But even if it was, you said, you know, a sequel could exist and we could still pick that. So, yeah. I want something epic in scale and, like, full-on turn-based RPG with, like, cool magic and all that stuff. Cool. Tyler, I'm really curious, because you are a man of many talents. You are a man who gets sequels to, the, to his games that he loves. So what's your dream sickle? Uh, my dream sickle uh, is not a scythe, but rather it is a proper sequel to uh, a, se- a series that I've been recently playing. Um, I want to see a proper Jack and Daxter 4, mm. or at least Jack 4, because, you know, they dropped the Daxter title for Jack 2 and 3. Uh, there technically is a Jack 4, though it wasn't made by Naughty Dog, called, uh, I think it was called Lost Frontier. But that game's trash, so no one talks about it. I want to see, like, an actual continuation from uh, Jack 3 Story, and probably Jack X, because that was a racing game. Uh, Like, in Jack 3... Jack and Dexter racing game? Yeah, Jack X. Yeah. I have have never heard of that. Yeah, man. Um, Every time Naughty Dog uh, ends a trilogy of games, they usually... uh, ended off with the kart racing game afterwards. They haven't done anything Uncharted or Last of Us yet, the, though the key word is yet. yet. Or Ratchet <laughs> Clank. Wait, that's, no, my, that's not Naughty yeah, Dog. That's, that's Insomniac, bro. Yeah. But, I uh, wasn't yeah. actually listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if they ever do make a Jack 4, I want to see like the expansion of uh, the guns that they... Uh, like, they expanded the gun mechanic from Jack 2 to 3, and I want to see them um, explore more of the whole eco stuff that they can do with the weapons. Probably give him more combat capabilities, probably uh, tougher platforming challenges, all that stuff. Just make it Jack 2 without all the bullshit, you know? Um, that's something that I would want to see, honestly. And I think uh, in this new PS5 era, it would look pretty dang purdy if um, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is anything to go off of. I was just looking up the Lost Frontier because I didn't know that was like a Jack Four. I thought it was like a like a spinoff title, like Size Matters was. It is Richard and Frank. it isn't. Uh, it was basically a project that Naughty Dog was going to work on, but uh, they were also working on Uncharted One at the same time. Mm. So they were like, "Fuck it, let's get this new age uh, uh, video game out for the PS3, uh, and we'll just stop focusing on this Jack and Daxter game." Let's just let some other company handle it. Comes out two years later, and no one likes it. But it's, is it a continuation of the story, or is it a spinoff? Uh, yes and no. Uh, from what I've seen, it's kind of a weak continuation from where Jack 3 left off. Gotcha. Huh. All right. All right. So so we have Mar- Super, the actual Super Mario RPG 2, and then Jack, a legit Jack 4. This is mine, and I thought about it for five minutes, literally five minutes, because I it was it was that easy. Um, cause, uh, Golden Sun Four. Ooh. See, that was gonna um, be mine, but I thought you would take it. Uh, for those who don't know and have either new here or never heard me talk before, uh, Golden Sun was the game to. Well, Grandia opened the door. Uh, Golden Sun was there at the lobby waiting for me. Um. That's a good analogy, Ben. I th- thank you. I think that was very good. Um, you should be and that. S- yeah, and so go. I you know I love the first two Golden Sun. Waited almost nine years for Golden Sun Dark Dawn to come out and get being super disappointed as a twenty one year old. Uh, oh my God, Dark Dawn is. T- <laughs> it's oh. not great, but there were stuff in there. 
that Dark Dawn introduced that was interesting. You you had learned. I would pick off right where I just want to see the fucking story in because they brought back Alex, who we thought he was dead at the end of Golden Sun: The Lost Age. You introduced lycanthropes. You introduced that there's light and dark synergy, which of course it's kind of cliche, but whatever. That's a new interesting synergy. I would I wanted to see more of the world post turning on all the lighthouses and how was alchemy running because you kind of you don't you kind of get that and like the the landscape has changed a bit but you kind of it, it's it's weird but i wanted to see more i wanted let me go back to prox let me go see my old places let me go back because again some stuff is there but a lot of it shifted because it's been 10 years and the earth is literally growing itself back so i would just want to explore more of that world uh and just see what everything else looked like and i would have done and this is and i said this before like a long time ago but i i, I assumed golden sun 4 would have been on the 3ds and i would use it to like the 3d effect would only be for boss fights so like you would have this because like one of the cool things about, about i thought i thought about the original golden sun is like how the the bad guys were always like they look far back. So I would use the the three D slider to have this cool. It's like they're that far. Oh, it, it would just it would look it would, to me it would look cool. Um, and I don't know, man. Like I would just that would be it, and it would just be a continuation. Uh, part of me wants Isaac to make the ultimate hero sacrifice play. Um, at the end of four, I don't know what the plot would be because I can't even remember what the danger was in three, other than oh, we learned that there's like this new empire that came out of nowhere. I would like to know more. Like we would have found out more about them. What's their deal? What's going on? Maybe uh, the actually, you know what? I this is I think about it. I'm getting memories back up. Like the 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 wise one, the ancient one, or whatever he was called, the big stone floating eye that you saw at the beginning of your journey when the uh, the stones. Uh, for the light to light the lighthouses were stolen at the very beginning of the first game. He saw him, and he pretty much at the end of Golden Sun Lost Age Two, he pretty much transforms your parents and and another one of your friends' parents into that into the Doom Dragon. Yet, and, and you nearly kill them because you didn't think it was him. He would be the final boss, and you would finally know why. Why didn't he want Alchemy to return? What was so dangerous about it? Because it, about outside of the the vortexes that were showing up what else is going on there's got to be more to that and and like he would transform into this chthonic chthonic god monster that you would have to fight to defeat and you would use every single party member from all four games so the new kids from the from the first two games there would be new kids introduced in this game that were like descendants of characters that we didn't see because i think uh we got pierce's kid um uh, uh garrett's kid um and Isaac's kid, and I think, and the Lycanthrope was the new character. But I would see Ivan's kids. I would see, um, I think Mia's kids, and them were also there too. But I, I would, I would have all the old crew come back. Um, you know, from both Golden Sun, Golden Sun: The Lost Age, to be like, what happened to Felix? Um, what happened to everybody? I, I want to know. And, and the fact that I'll probably never know at this point sucks. But if there's one game that deserves a sequel, I don't. Other games don't have to be made. I don't need Golden Sun five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't need that. Just four. Just so I can see how the fuck all this madness ends, where you finally take on the wise, the ancient one, and destroy his fucking dumb rock-looking ass. Sorry, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, trademark copyrighted TM. Um, but also remake the first two because they don't actually hold up that well. I'm I'm gonna ignore that comment and say just port them, uh. But um, so yeah, I just like seriously give. I need closure, man. I really want closure to that story. Granted, you could just play the first two and and that's it because you get the happy ending. Um, but fuck again that they're. Ha I don't care what they do if they do eventually remake one, two, and three, and then make a fourth one. The final boss has to be. The ain't the the wise whatever the fuck his name is, it has to be him, because he's the one thing you see, but you never fight, even though because he's deemed that powerful, and I want to fight it. So, there you go, Golden Sun Four, Jack Four, and Super Mario RPG Two. Um, I want to give a a quick honorable mention to 
a uh, a proper sequel to Fortune Street because that game is dope and it's stuck on the Wii. And yeah. they had a few others after it. Like uh, I think there was a uh, Final Fantasy crossover one that was Japan only. And so, like, the last one we've gotten in America was Fortune Street, um, which is basically Dragon Quest meets Mario meets Monopoly, um, for those that don't know. And it's, like, the most fun, like, board game party thing that is out there. I actually like it more than Mario Party. Yeah. Yeah, that's that seems... I guess I'm alone on that one. And no, nobody really, uh, very few people play that game. They'd rather play Mario Party because you can actually get angry at your friends. Uh -huh. I mean, you all can right, be pretty so angry at Fortune Street. It's all about like stonks and, you know, making money moves. That's why I don't want to play it. Stonks. I don't like stonks. Anger isn't stonks mutually movies. exclusive. Yeah. That's. <laughs> I'm feeling, if, I've never seen Tyler angry, but I have a feeling he wouldn't like be angry like you are get. Justin, but he would just sit there, and you could just feel it. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. something's wrong. Something's wrong. Um, like if Dino's angry. Yeah, you just all of a sudden you'll see like an aura around Tyler. I'm like, what the, where'd that fucking come from? Okay, um, all right, that's we'll gonna do. To, it for we'll have to show. whip out the Mario Party in San Antonio. <laughs> oh, um, either either that or we'll play it online. Um, that's uh, the new the new ones the new ones gonna have all. Oh, that's true. Yeah, online. that's that's an option. So. One or the other. Uh, I think that, that game actually comes. That game actually comes. I think it would probably come out after that San Antonio trip. So, probably. Yeah. 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 Because if we're going the first weekend of October. Um. All right. That's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Uh. Let us know what your dream sequel is, and Lord knows, I know there's probably a, a hundreds of you out there who want to tell everybody about their dream sequel. Give us all the details, please. Um. Be sure to add us at charge at charge shot and be use the hashtag dream sickle. Like, I'm not kidding. Dreamsicle. Um, just to confuse people. Uh, Justin, plug your crap. Uh, well, I mean, I guess if it's crap, I won't bother. No, um, I am at Zero Score on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, all that good stuff. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I will have my review video of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart up in the near future, hopefully. And I will continue streaming Resident Evil 5 with Ben for the next few weeks. Tyler. You can follow me on Twitter at Hey It's That Ty. Check the pinned tweet uh, to take you to my YouTube channel. Um, I recently did a video on uh, Star Wars Masters of Terrorist Sky, an old ass ass video game that is not good. I had a fun time making that video, so check it out. And you can find me at twitter.com slash marvelousiki for all related things to the marvelous one. I do plan on streaming by the time this episode out. Hopefully, I will stream twice this week. That's twitch.tv slash iki2814. Uh, I'm starting to get back into the mindset of things. We'll see how it goes. Um, and But I will still be with Justin regardless on Thursdays at, at, at his channel for RE5 for the next couple of weeks because uh, that was fun. Um, namely, to call him out whenever he wastes ammo uh, <laughs> on, a, on a zombie that doesn't need to be wasting ammo and then laugh at him when he He's doesn't have ammo. Dead. Yeah, stop it! Um, uh, the games will probably not change. I'll be try. I will definitely still be playing Mass Effect and Grandia for sure. Just gotta remember exactly how to play those games again. Uh, it's just a problem. What am I gonna stream Tuesday? Well, you have to tune in to find out because I I don't even have an idea what I'm gonna stream on Tuesday. Um, but uh, also be sure to go to Charge.com for all Charge content. Uh, Tyler and I released the debut episode of Cinema Shot, which is on Justice League: The Flashpoint Paradox. And by the time this episode's out, the next episode on Justice League War, the second part of the DC Cinematic Universe, animated cinematic universe, will be out. So you can check that out. Of course, also check out Atomic Shark, uh, which by the time by the, the latest episode, which is Meg Shark vs. Colossus, that is officially out by those guys. Are you guys done? Are you no. guys almost done, please? Almost done. You only got a few more left, Ben. Yeah, we just recorded uh, Atlantic Rim Resurrection, and then there's two more after that. Hey, res wait, there's a, a that thing got a fucking sequel, and it's everything gets a sequel. Uh, it is either okay. the best one we've seen or the worst one we've seen. Find out, and I'm indulge. pretty sure you can guess. 
Uh, but you can check that out if you're into the shitty horror action giant monster movies. Or you, if you like good monster movies for the most part, you can check out Atomic Shot that is officially done. That that's me, insane, Tyler, man. me and Tyler did. So that that's awesome. Uh, hey, most 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 of them are, if not all of them, are better than the Asylum. Don't that's don't true. play. It's like one or two that's like on par, and that's like that's like rare. That's like not even, that's not even close. Um, There's a few of these Asylum movies I would watch over Godzilla ninety eight. And you, I'd watch all, a lot of things over Godzilla ninety eight. That's not, that's not fair. That's not, it doesn't even count. It doesn't. That's not, it's not even a Godzilla movie. We did it as a joke. Um, and uh, but thank you all for the support. Uh, we'll, we'll see you all next week for another episode of Atomic Shot. What? Until next time, guys. I, I said Atomic Shot. <laughs> yeah, <I>? you did. <laughs> we will see you all next week for an episode of Chart Shot. Thank you for watching and listening, everybody. Until next time. Get fucked, Justin. Say charge. <laughs> charge up these nuts. Oh, point. <laughs>